Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the Finding the Right ECM Solution Know Your Options webinar. Today's webinar will be presented by Deanna Ferrante. Deanna has been in the ECM industry for five years, and she is currently the team lead of Back Office Solutions at Perceptive Software. Deanna holds an MBA with an emphasis in human resources and has a human resources information professional certification. We will be taking live Q&A at the end of today's webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation, please submit those via the questions box in the GoToWebinar window. Today's webinar will be recorded, and we will send you a link to the recording so that you can share this with your colleagues. Deanna, I will hand it over to you. Great. Thanks so much, Alicia. I'm really excited to be with you today to talk to you about ECM, um, Enterprise Content Management, and the potential that it holds for your organization. Now, some of you may have ECM solution or even multiple solutions in place today, and some of you may be exploring whether ECM is for you and how it can help your business processes. So hopefully today's content will be helpful for you as you go through that. Here's a list of some of the things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with just defining what ECM is at, at a very high level and talk quickly through that and then really get into how ECM can help benefit uh, different processes throughout your organization. We want to talk about how it interacts with all the other systems that you're using today. And we want to think about when we go to select a solution like enterprise content management, how we need to, to ask those questions, what we need to know in order to be prepared to make that decision. And then finally, we're going to talk about some key processes, specifically in the back office area, where ECM is really making a difference for a lot of folks today. And then um, just briefly touch on who we are and what we do. So let's start with what ECM is. I mentioned that ECM is Enterprise Content Management. So we're going to be talking about the content that you have in your organization. And we're going to focus first and foremost on how you capture that content. That may be through a variety of sources, both electronic as well as paper. It may also be through various systems or vendors or other departments throughout your organization. Regardless of how that information comes in, we want to capture that and we want to centralize it so that we can make it accessible to everyone who needs it. Once that information is captured, then we want to think about how we distribute it, how we share that information. So we want to know how that is managed throughout the organization. Who needs to access it? Who should see what information? How do we share that in an intelligent way and help enable the processes that they're responsible for? We also need to think about security, of course. As we think about information, we might be dealing with personal information when we think about HR. We might be dealing with financial information when we think of accounting. Uh, we may be dealing with vendor information or sensitive contract terms when we talk about our contract process. So we want to think about how to secure it and how to only share it with the folks who need to see it and then keep that information private as needed. And then finally, when we think about the content, how are we going to access it? And that not only means who and where, but how throughout your organization. And we want to make sure that when we're thinking about enterprise content management, we're not just limited to that laptop or that desktop computer in front of you, but that we're also thinking about mobile, for example, as a way to access content and information so that, that those people who are on the road or those people who work remotely are also getting access to the content they need to do their job. So enterprise content management, that's really what it is but it can really do a lot for your processes that you have today. And the first step in, in really understanding the impact of ECM is to discover the processes that you have. And that means really talking to folks in your organization and understanding how business gets done. Once we've done that, then we're able to go in and really design our processes around what needs to be accomplished. So that's putting all of those pieces and all those requirements in the right order and then allowing individuals to interact with that process in a meaningful way. Once we've got it designed, of course, we want to start using it. And once we start using processes, as you've probably found in your organization as well, we sometimes find areas that aren't working quite as well as we had originally envisioned. And so once we've executed the process, we want to go back and we really want to analyze where there are efficiencies to be gained so that we can then go in and improve upon those processes. And we're able to do that by taking data from your various systems and being able to go in and look at uh, what's working and what's not, and then go back and apply that data, that information learned, to the process and make those changes. So ECM deals with our content, uh, and it deals with our processes that we have, but it also deals with the other systems that we 
we're using throughout the organization. So one of the things that we really focus on from an enterprise content management standpoint in the industry is how to retrieve and how to integrate our various systems. So when you're thinking about enterprise content management, ask yourself, does it interact with my ERP? Is it going to be able to go into Oracle or PeopleSoft or SAP and help me connect those dots? Will I be able to do my normal daily processing and also be able to get documents and content associated with those processes right at my fingertips? So putting that content in context is a really important part of any ECM system so that you can make sure you're really improving the way you do business today. Just a quick example of, of what this could look like. If we take the application uh, uh, people thought and take it through an HR example here, you'll see that on a daily basis, if you've ever dealt with HR, you know that requests are coming in and out constantly for information. And because they're the keeper of your employee file, they very likely have information that you need for other things in your life. So I may need to have some tax information shared with me, and I may not have a copy of what was provided to HR. But by simply going into PeopleSoft in this case, HR can have access to a record for the employee, and then, again, connect it to that content that allows them to go in and say, I know who you are, I know what information you're looking for, and I can very quickly pull up the document you've requested and reply in kind. Now, as you know, efficiencies are very important for us today, especially in the economy, thinking about how we need to do more with less staff on a daily basis. So imagine the efficiencies gained by being able to answer the question immediately. Not taking a note, not putting the phone down, not walking away from your email to go pull files, find the answer, and respond to that individual. So I've visually verified it, I've responded, and all of this can happen simply in a matter of seconds. So connecting your content and your ERP is really critical component. Now with all of that said, now that we've really set our baseline for what enterprise content management really is, let's talk about how to think about selecting the right ECM solution. Here's 10 things that I've come up with that I think are really critical to think about as you go down the selection process. Whether you have a system today and you're thinking about supplementing it, whether you don't have a system in place today and you want to implement one, or whether you're looking to replace what you already use. The first thing is your business stakeholders, and they are critical to this decision-making process. I've often seen people document their processes at a high level, managers, directors, even vice presidents, document their processes, and then go show that to a business stakeholder who looks at them and says, I don't know what process this is that you just showed me. So it's really important that we go to the source, that we go to the people who are executing the process. Because how we envisioned it, how we drew it up, how we think it's being executed is not necessarily what's happening today. So before you start trying to automate processes, make sure you understand how those processes are actually working. This is also a great time for you to assess whether that's working for your organization or not. The second thing to think about here is really your business requirements. And business requirements change, of course, as regulations change, as your organization changes, as you acquire new companies or are acquired by companies. All of those rules and regulations certainly are going to be in flux. But there should be some core business requirements you're required to meet that we want to focus on here. So make sure that you understand at the end of the day, what are we expected to do and how are we going to get there? And of course, most of those requirements are going to come down from an executive level. They're going to tie into overall organizational strategic objectives. Executive sponsors, of course, are also the ones who are going to write the check, if you will, for an uh, enterprise content management or ECM system. So it's important to understand what's important to them. Do they have goals? Do they have expectations that need to be met as part of this overall system um, that you're looking to implement? So taking, taking that into consideration will allow you not only to get their buy-in, but to make sure at the end of the day, whatever solutions you put in place are going to meet their expectations. Another thing which seems inherent based on the, the term enterprise content management, but isn't always true. Make sure that it truly can be used across the enterprise. Certainly every ECM vendor is going to have a solution or a, a series of solutions that they do better than others, um, but you want to make sure that you're looking for the most comprehensive offering. Are they able to really deal with all my front office, my back office, my line of business processes that I'm interested um, in applying them to? So that enterprise use is really critical. You're going to probably pick a place to start, but it won't be long before everyone figures out how great that is and how much efficiency has been gained and wants to expand into their area as well. 
It also helps to think about enterprise use in terms of spreading the cost across your organization. Of course, this gives you an opportunity to get multiple people bought in, not only to the benefits and the solutions, but also into sharing some of that cost across. Change management is always huge. When we think about the individuals that work with in, within an organization, they have very routine processes, um, very uh, similar daily tasks probably that they're performing at a transactional level. And, and change can be scary, of course, but it can also disrupt their ability to be productive. So getting ahead of that and thinking about what changes will be required in order for you to affect um, the change that you want in order to bring in enterprise content software and be able to tie that into those processes is going to be really important. Just as an example, when we think about change management, um, if someone's use their process starts by going and making four copies, that's certainly going to change if we're going to scan in the original copy and then distribute that electronically. So thinking about how those processes will be affected is certainly important. Some other things to keep in mind are future plans for systems you have today. So, for example, if we think of um, people who are on, let's say, Oracle eBusiness and who are needing to upgrade to a new uh, version, then we want to make sure that what you've put in place today isn't going to be um, broken by that upgrade. So look for enterprise content management that's flexible enough to quickly and easily integrate with new versions or upgraded versions of software you already use today. The number seven is process change management. I mentioned this a little bit in the overall change management, but something to really keep in mind with process, um, processes specifically is, um, are we affecting any regulations? If we're going to change this process, are we going to be out of compliance? Are we going to create any audit issues? Are we going to no longer be able to provide that report that our CFO really likes um, because we're updating this information or getting it in a new way? So think about not just the process itself, but the outputs you're responsible for and who those need to be provided to, and make sure that it's going to allow you to continue to produce that information. Another key uh, component of enterprise content management is how easy is it to use and how easy is it to set up? What resources do we need internally to be able to make this system work for us? And that could be your business stakeholders that we've already talked about. It could be IT. What's the role of IT in this implementation? Are they solely responsible? and Do they have to be engaged in everything? Can they be part of the initial implementation, but then can the stakeholders really run with that solution from that point forward? So some good things to think about is who you want to own this system, this solution, and how you're going to organize that across different departments within your company. Number nine is process improvement. So we talked about how processes are going to change. Well, hopefully those changes are for the better. Hopefully you're going to find areas where you say, we've always done it this way, but we've done it that way because we need four people to sign this document. Maybe at the end of the day, if we can get it electronic and implement electronic signatures, we no longer even have to print it. And rather than it taking seven days to get it signed, it might only take seven hours. So what things can we be doing or what things can we be looking at that actually would improve how we manage those processes today? And finally, on 10 things to think about is really your vision for what those solutions should be. So you've probably come into this, again, either with something that you do today and that's guiding your thoughts about what you want to do, or you come into this and said, I don't have enterprise content management, but everybody's telling me that we should really be looking at this, but you've got a vision for what you think that should look like. And when thinking about ECM um, and enterprise content management, you want to make sure you're partnering with an organization that can help you fulfill that vision. They're thinking about what, what's important to you, not just giving you something they've already built that you then take and make work for you and your organization. So partnering around that vision, really critical component. So five things to ask your ECM providers. As you go through vendor selection process, or even if you go back to the vendors you're using today, these are some questions you might want to ask them uh, in order to understand what role they play, how you're going to interact, how you're going to get work accomplished. The first thing is, how does this work when we make a change? Let's, let's say that we become accountable to a new regulation, or thinking about, obviously, the most recent healthcare regulation. How is that going to impact the way people do processes? And what if I've got something implemented and now we're accountable for five new reports? or new information that has to be stored, or seven new forms that have to be completed. How do those changes impact the solution we have? How easy is it to modify a form 
or include new groups who need to access that information. Lots of things that happen when processes change, but you want to make sure that your ACM evolves with your process and as easily as possible. Of course, when we think about a new vendor, the most important thing to do is to really um, connect with their customers, understand who their customers are, what they've deployed, and, and lessons learned. Don't be afraid to ask these vendors for references. They should be able to provide you customers who can tell you the bumps and bruises as well as the success stories. They should also be able to provide you a feeling for how many other folks have implemented that solution or how many other people like your company um, they've deployed or how many people have, um, you know, they have within a specific industry. So really understand the dynamics and the base of customers that that um, ECM provider uh, can provide. And then as we think more globally, as we think more um, about access and efficiency and getting to information, we want to think about deployment options. And this is everything from do we want it installed at our location, on our server, within our firewall, or do we want to look at SaaS? Do we want to look at an on-premise or a hosted solution? And what are the pros and cons of both? You'll want to make sure that you talk to the ACM providers about what their options are how comfortable they are with those, and how they can work with you to meet your goals. Um, some organizations, for example, aren't going to be able to go outside their firewall, so you're going to need some of your solution to be on-premise. Um, and some solutions are going to be completely outside. Maybe it's outsourced, you've outsourced your IT, um, and you have a remote data center, and so you need to be able to host it there. Some individuals, some organizations may prefer to actually host it um, with the ECM provider themselves, so understanding their compliance. Um, a, around a hosted center would be important as well. So thinking about what's important to you, have that conversation with that provider so they can help you decide the best fit for your organization. Another thing, of course, that's always important and, and we would be remiss not to talk about, of course, is total cost of ownership. I want to show you a slide here around the ECM industry specifically that was done by Gartner. And this talks a little bit about the two main components of any enterprise content management implementation, and that would be our services and our licenses. And when we think about license costs, most everyone's going to fit around the average. And you'll see here the industry average bar on the right and perceptive softwares on the left for a point of comparison. So licenses are going to be fairly standard um, across the board. But when we think about services, this really gets into those questions we asked about how easy it is to implement, how easy it is to maintain. So in that initial deployment, you'll see that the services cost is a little bit lower um, than the industry average because it's a little easier for people to take and once they understand how the system works, be able to implement that on their own. When we think about expansion, so I've already installed this enterprise content management system, and now I want to move it into another area. We've found the efficiencies we were looking for. Now we're ready to go find some new efficiencies somewhere else in the organization. Um, again, here we're primarily dependent um, on maybe some additional licenses because we've added users, um, and maybe some additional services costs as well. But we want to, again, look at minimizing that, hopefully, so that you're doing um, a lot of the investigation on where you want to move it to, and then you're needing minimal services to be able to execute on that. And then finally, when we think about the business system change I mentioned, um, the integration here is really critical. A lot of times you'll need to uh, purchase additional licenses and potentially a lot of services in order to work with any upgraded or new systems that you introduce to this business process. So being able to minimize some of those costs as well is really important. And what that leads to then is just a lower total cost of ownership across the organization. And as we continue to expand, you just recognize and, and are rewarded with that benefit over and over again. So now I want to talk about a few key processes just to give you some very specific examples of where enterprise content management may play within your organization. I'm going to start with contracts here, and, and this is purposely drawn as a circle because as those of you know who've had to deal with contracts, whether that be employment contracts or vendor contracts or a customer agreement, know this process definitely goes in a circle. Um, and that is um, all really tied around one or two central documents that manage our relationship with the other entity. So when we talk about contracts, we really want to focus on um, how ECM can help you uh, not only store the contract, but then be able to access it for things like uh, reviews and renewals, for a risk analysis, to make sure that we're within compliance of our terms, 
we want to have access to that information and then really make sure that that contract is optimized before we go back either through the composition or the negotiation and renewal phase. So what can ECM do for contracts? Well, it can help you by making consistent contract terms, giving you visibility to what information is being used and how that can be used more consistently with other contracts that you're using. Obviously, automating the process helps tremendously. As soon as a document gets into an electronic form, we're all working off the same version, we're all accessing the same information, and we're able to share that with anyone that needs it through a simple workflow or a share tool. Increasing visibility is the number one need um, for contracts. Because when we have them in silos, when we store them in separate repositories, when we look at them independently, we miss the opportunity to not only create compliance and ensure that we're meeting our risk tolerance and our standards, but also to make sure that we're leveraging the best of the best across all of our different contracts. So if we've negotiated a great rate with a specific vendor and someone else has a relationship with another vendor, we want to create some visibility and allow them to leverage those relationships. Certainly on the forefront of a CFO's mind or anyone responsible for um, fiscal within your organization is going to be concerned about how to optimize financial performance. So if we're letting contracts auto-renew, for example, without looking to see if there are better terms or better rates available to us, we might be missing out on opportunities to save the organization money or to charge more for our services for our outward-facing contracts. And then, of course, anything that we're doing with a contract, we're really looking to minimize that legal risk as much as possible. So if there are standards set that say we're not going to allow termination um, costs to exceed this or to be less than that, we want to make sure that everyone's within that tolerance. And if they're not, we want to be able to flag that and make sure that we let someone know. So combining all of this into a central repository and using ECM to ha create that visibility allows your contract team and everyone that participates in that contract process to, to make sure that they're optimized to their fullest potential. Another area where ECM can really add a lot of value is human resources. We talk about uh, HR and we talk about an employee life cycle because everyone starts from an application process and goes all the way through an offboarding process, uh, no matter how long or short that time period may be. And throughout each of those phases, there are a series of documents involved. We're collecting a majority of that in the recruiting and onboarding process where we're learning about you and we're collecting your file information. But when we get into things like employee management, for example, we start to see things come hit or miss. So I may need to take a leave of absence. That creates paper and a document trail and workflow and approvals and signatures. I may need to make updates to my information as I move, get married, have children. Anything that I'm doing throughout my time, my tenure at the organization is creating paperwork, it's creating workflow, it's creating approval. And all of those things can easily be managed through enterprise content management. When we think about HR2, it's one of the more likely places for organizations to have multiple systems. So I may have an HRIS, like an Oracle or a PeopleSoft or a JD Edwards, um, but I also may have third-party applications. I may be using other applications to be able to uh, capture recruiting information or manage my performance management process or to look at how we're doing benefits. All of those systems contain vital information and are ultimately tied back to employees who live in our HRIS or our system of record. So we start to see some silos with information. We see information housed throughout the organization with different people having access and not having access. So what ECM can do for us is start to bring all of that content back together. We can leverage things like Taleo, for example, for recruiting and onboarding and the value that it can bring to uh, those processes, but then we can start to connect the dots. We can make, as you saw earlier, um, Oracle and our ECM talk to each other so that we're getting content back that's tied to a record in Oracle. But we can also then pull that content that's tied to a record in Taleo, for example, or success factors if we think about performance management. We can start to pull that information into the ECM as well, and now what we've really created is access to content from any system that I use, all centrally stored as one employee file within your enterprise content management solution. And of course, when we think of back office, we think of accounting functions because we spend a lot of time paying bills and receiving invoices as well as invoicing other institutions. So just a couple of statistics here that I think are really valuable as we think about the value enterprise content management can add. 
77% of all business invoicing is still on paper. So that means more than three-fourths of that process is still initiated by mail, mail that arrives at my organization, and then I need to do something with that piece of paper. Well, in most processes today, if I'm using this in accounting, uh, if I'm looking at the accounting and AP process, for example, I'm making the first thing I might do is make a copy. I might go make a copy of that invoice because I need to send it to the manager of a department who's going to give me the GL coding, for example. So a lot of these processes can be um, changed radically just by getting that either electronically provided to us, either through e-invoicing or through through mail, uh, email, or whatever mechanism the in invoice can be provided, um, and turning that into uh, a sharing through more of a workflow or electronic format. So enterprise content management allowing you to push that invoice to the manager rather than creating copies so that I don't have to worry about how many times I've paid that invoice or I don't have to worry about when it was received and how long the manager has been sitting on it, really starting to create that visibility that we need in order to process those invoices. And then the, the other end of that spectrum is what's happening with that data. So um, again, three-fourths of that data on those invoices that are coming in in paper is still being keyed manually into a system. So I'm still going into PeopleSoft or SAP or Lawson and keying this information in to the system, which opens it up to errors and also creates a time suck. This is where a majority of that time is being spent by your AP professionals uh, rather than looking at bigger picture items being able to produce reporting, being able to manage vendor relationships, and so forth. So a few key things here. Lots of opportunity to reduce costs and save money in the accounting function. Um, mostly, though, when we talk to um, finance professionals, what we're really going to focus on is where's the ROI. And one of the big drivers of that is our ability to process invoice payments more quickly and being able to capture and take advantage of those vendor discounts and early payments. So if you think about um, all the opportunities you missed out on today because the manager was on vacation and you didn't know it or the invoice sat on their desk for a week, we can really start to take advantage of some of that and even save money for the company just simply by paying the bills in a more timely manner. And then there's the idea of cost avoidance. When we think about being able to save money in, in accounting, we can certainly think of better things for those employees to be doing with their time. So if we can bring invoices in electronically, we can capture data off those invoices and automatically upload it into uh, the ERP system. Those employees, again, are freed up to focus more on the payment, the management, and the strategy associated with accounting functions. And then finally, just a few benefits you'll see here. And, and I would point out that um, one of the greatest benefits of enterprise content management across the board, but certainly for the accounting function, is just simultaneous access to documents. So being able to have one master document but create multiple points of access throughout your organization so that a manager and accounting professional can both be looking at the same invoice and making sure that they're talking about the same information. Uh, that's a really critical component, again, not just for accounting, but certainly we see the value there when we think about um, the, the money associated with paying invoices more than once or not getting them paid on time. Just another quick example here, this time using Lawson and thinking about our vendor and invoice information. This is the system that a majority of accounting professionals are going to be in throughout the day. And then when they want to view content related to it, being able to enable that directly from a Lawson or a PeopleSoft or another system allows them to stay within the processes they're used to today. We talked about earlier the idea of minimizing change management. And if I'm accustomed to going into Lawson to find the information I need, this really doesn't change my process. It's simply enables the process by also providing me the documentation that supports what I'm looking at in the system. Opening that invoice, you'll see I also have the PO here. So if I need to go in and do some cross-checking or some matching, I'm able to do that right here just by simply having gone in and viewed the invoice that I received. And again, this can be the manager, this could be the accounting professional. You can share this access as needed so that multiple individuals have access uh, to, to view it and to take action as quickly as possible. So four key points here to, to leave you with as we think about enterprise content management and the value that it, it can add for you as an organization. The first is really to understand the issues for your company and any costs associated with those. So what really is our pain point? We might feel like our pain point is that invoices don't get paid fast enough, but is there something else driving that? So really digging in and understanding the root cause of some of the, the uh, issues that you're dealing with today 
can help you. And then what is the bottom line to that? This issue, if we were to resolve it, would save us X dollars or would make us more money because we would be able to optimize it. And then, of course, understanding the direction of your organization. What, where are you trying to go? What is really the critical path? For example, if I'm an organization that wants to expand globally, inter enterprise content management can allow me to do that because I'm sharing information instantly with countries and, and individuals in other countries um, without having to send it to them, email it to them, risk you know, um, compromising uh, sensitive data. So I'm able to really leverage this platform to make sure that everyone that needs the content has it. And now maybe I can speed up some of those processes. Maybe I can start to really um, improve our sales process globally because they have access to customer agreements as well as to all the supporting documentation. And as we mentioned, when we talked through things to really check with your vendors about, make sure you're, you're partnering with someone who's experienced. Um, not just in the software side of things, because all ECM providers probably have a good understanding of the software and the technology, but really on the process and content side as well. You want someone who can help you think about your process, think about the software, and then really connect those pieces together in a meaningful way. And then finally, just thinking about that roadmap for your company, those goals that we mentioned above and the issues that you're facing and, the, and what it's costing your organization, um, that can really help you develop this roadmap. Where do we need to start, for example? Where's our biggest pain point in the organization? We thought we were going to go implement this um, in our front office or in our accounting, but we found out that our onboarding costs us millions of dollars every year. Maybe we need to start in HR instead because that's where we can see the biggest savings right away. So prioritizing that and making sure you have a good understanding of what's going to benefit the organization the most. So in just two slides here, I'd like to give you a quick overview of um, who we are and our role in the ECM industry so that you have a good feel for, um, for who, who we are and what we do. And then I'll go in and look at uh, those questions you've been submitting throughout. If you haven't had a chance to do that yet, please feel free to do that now and we'll answer any questions that you've submitted as we've gone through. So a couple of things, conventional um, ECM, enterprise content management, can often be complicated to set up and administer. So you want to make sure that it's simple uh, to use. Sometimes it can compete with those other systems that you're using. They, they don't integrate well. They don't work well together. So you want to make sure you're thinking about that. The users are, are sometimes confused by what is this and what value is it providing. So making sure you understand how it's, it's helping them as well as making sure the user experience is intuitive. If I think I should go click on this button, does it do what I think it should do? Really giving the users some say into what's going to work best for them. And then thinking about those deployment options. What, what options do I have and are you going to help me decide which one's the best for my organization? So perceptive, here's some things we think we do uh, very well um, related to what I just mentioned. First of all, really empowering administrators and users. We put the power into the business owner's hands so they can work with IT, they can work with their IS teams, but they really are, it's intuitive enough that they are able to manage and administer this um, as, as deemed necessary. Um, complementing those existing systems, being able to integrate. You saw the third-party integration slides where we talked about other systems you're using and how to centralize that content. Really, that's a story across your whole organization. You've got content everywhere, maybe in other ECMs, maybe in other niche software that you're using. Um, bringing that all together is a really critical uh, part of what we're able to do and what we're able to provide for our customers. Making it intuitive, making it easy to use, and then providing a lot of options. Whether you want to be SaaS on premise or SaaS hosted, whether you want to have managed uh, your system managed remotely by us, whether you want to manage it all in house yourself, all of those are options that you have, and you want to make sure um, that any vendor you talk to is able to provide you with those similar options. So who we are, we were founded in 1995. We're right here in the middle of the uh, United States in Kansas City, um, focusing primarily on process and content management, how to help you improve your business processes and store and retrieve and access and secure your content. We're one of the 10 largest providers in the world of ECM. So we've been doing this for a while and we've been doing it well. Um, and you'll see that we are part of a bigger network. We're part of uh, the Lexmark family, as well as we've added several, um, several organizations to our family to really build out our 
story and what we're able to offer our customers. So we're growing every day, and that's helping us to make sure we can meet the needs that you have as an organization. Another key component for Perceptive uh, to be aware of is, is the industry expertise. So um, Alicia mentioned um, my humble overview at the beginning of this presentation. We have folks who are highly trained in very specific processes and, and um, departments. So uh, I have significant background in the HR space so that when we go to talk about our software, we're not just talking about software, but we're talking about what it can really do for someone in HR, for example. Um, we're located throughout the world, as you can see by this map here. Uh, so we have local presences for, presence for a lot of you that, um, that may be out there looking for ECM today. Finally, I would just mention here with this last slide that we have a lot of partners. We work well and very deeply with a lot of organizations throughout the industry. And these partners are very valuable to what we do, but they've also found a lot of value in what we do. And you'll see that all of those highlighted here are also our customers. So a lot of these partners have seen um, the, the significant value we can bring to their organization and have chosen to utilize us internally as well. So with that, I'd like to step back and, and open this up for questions, anything that you might have um, as we've gone through the presentation, anything you'd like to know more about. Um, so if you haven't, again, had a chance to submit those, feel free to do that now. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll go through any questions that you have, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up here. So let me take a look here at what's been submitted. Okay, so um, in terms of some of the, the questions, things that we get quite a bit as well um, here at Perceptive, and I'm sure um, gets asked a lot of ECM providers in general, is um, how that licensing works, how, how we can share. Uh, we talked a lot about how to share and access content and information. So, um, one thing to be aware of when you're talking to those ECM providers, I would ask about their licensing structures. For example, is it specific to an individual? Is it a seat license, as some would call it, where each individual um, has to be a named user? Or is it concurrent licensing where it's stored at the server level and therefore as different people need access, they can just simply go and, and get a license and get access to their, their content as needed. So um, most organizations will offer both, but definitely something to think about as you go uh, through that, that process of uh, working with the vendors, um, what, what is that licensing structure and how is it going to work for your organization? If, for example, you have peak periods, how are they going to address that? So a couple of questions there about licensing, um, definitely questions that you would want to ask your vendor as you go through the selection process. I see a couple of other questions here uh, specifically about um, integration. We mentioned um, the, the integration being an important component. Can I be in the system I'm used to in Oracle, in SAP, in Lawson doing what I'm, I'm doing today and then be able to um, access content? Um, from Perceptive's perspective, I will tell you um, that we have a patented integration called Learn Mode that allows us to go out um, and learn uh, your systems that you have. I, I've mentioned the big ones today, but We've integrated with more than 800 uh, applications, including a variety of homegrown uh, custom applications that you might have, um, so that when I'm on a screen, by clicking a button either on the screen that's embedded um, or clicking into, um, into our software, you're able to retrieve that content immediately. So, so the two systems do become integrated. That's what we mean by integrated. Um, so something, again, to ask as you're, as you're going through this process and make sure that there's a way for you to tie that content together, not just that they live side by side. Uh, a couple of other questions here specifically around reporting um, and, and something that I didn't touch on in the presentation but is certainly important and valuable as you go through um, making sure that you're able to get the content out um, that you need and then that the reporting can be made available throughout the organization. You can push reports out. Um, to individual managers, for example, about their department or about invoices that they were tied to or about their new hires. Certainly want to make sure that that's part of any system you're, you're looking at as well. Um, and, and those reports can be specific to data. They can be specific to the documents as well. When we think about enterprise content management, you're going to be managing both um, paper, documents that have come into the system, electronic information that's come into the system. I've got the document and I've got the data associated with that document. So making sure you can report on both of those is important as well. I think I've grouped together a majority of the questions that were asked. I'll give you just another minute if anyone has any last questions. 
Um, and if not, we can conclude for today. Any last questions? Okay, I don't see anything from the group, so we'll go ahead and conclude for today. I do thank you for your time to join us. Certainly, if you have any questions or want to follow up on any of the information provided, you can see my contact information here, um, and, and we hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.